my fellow gods and goddesses, welcome back to my channel. My name is Heather and today we are doing my August wrap up. So the month of August, I really done did that in my reading productivity. I managed to read 17 things, which is way higher than it normally has been. I've kind of noticed during this year of reading and having a booktube channel and being able to really pay attention to the books I'm reading, how much I'm reading, when I'm reading them, I've kind of realized that summer is not a productive reading time for me. I don't know what it is about summer and just like sitting in my room all day you would think that I would do a lot of reading but really that's just when the depression hits me. I'm laughing but it's true. I'm gonna give it to Virgo season. The productivity really just escalates and I really done did that. So let's just get into all of the things I read. I read a wide variety of ratings this month. I'm not gonna go over them for you because that would require me to prepare ahead of time for this video and I am just not about that. Let's get into it. So we are going to go through the books in the order that I read them and so the first book I read in the month of August is One Dark Throne by Kendara Blake. This is the sequel to Three Dark Crowns which I gave a four out of five stars I believe and honestly this was boring and I feel like I'm definitely in the minority here because going through the reviews I noticed that a lot more people loved this book as opposed to Three Dark Crowns and me personally I am not on that boat. I thought this book dragged and dragged even though everybody else seems to be like this is the most exciting book in the series so I don't know if it was just because I didn't listen because I listened to this on audiobook Book, but I also listened to Three Art Crowns on audiobook. However, the reason that I think that deterred my enjoyment of it this time around is because I listened to the book such short sporadic spurts. Um, so I would only listen to it like 15 to 20 minutes at a time and I think that definitely disconnected me from the story and from my enjoyment of it. So We'll see when I reread this the rest of the series if I ever do. I'm sure I will in the future if my opinions change, but I just wasn't all that interested in the story for this one. I believe I gave it a three out of five stars, so it wasn't the worst, but I definitely didn't enjoy as much as Three Dark Crowns. But that being said, I still really enjoy this series. I am listening to Two Dark Fates, or no, not Two Dark Fates. Two Dark Reigns I'm starting right now and Five Dark Fates comes out tomorrow the day that I'm filming this so I am excited to see how this series closes out because I just really love the concept and I really love a queen trope. The next book I read was A Study in Charlotte by Brittany Cavallero. I started this because Brittany Cavallero and Emily Henry were going to be at my local Barnes & Noble so I wanted to at least read something by those authors. I knocked this audiobook out so quickly. It was such a good audiobook. I thought it was very fun, very fast-paced. A Study in Charlotte is a kind of retelling, reimagining of the Sherlock Holmes chronicles. We follow the descendants of Holmes and Watson. We follow Jamie Watson and, Char and Charlotte Holmes and they are basically framed for murder at their school so they have to kind of go through the conniving mysteries of that and this book let me just say was so much darker than I anticipated. It deals with a lot of drug addiction and heavy hitting topics which I do personally really love and I think Brittany Cavallero did such a good job showing those heavy topics and showing the difficulties of dealing with abuse and all of those things and I really applaud her for doing it in a YA setting and I just think it was very well done. It just definitely came out of the blue like when I look at this cover I don't think heavy drug use, sexual abuse and things like that going in but it definitely is there and like I said I really thought it was done super well. I think it is a great YA mystery 
series and I'm really excited to continue with the rest of the series. And I also now have it signed, not only by Rocky, but by the author as well. And I'll also, uh, I forgot to mention, I gave A Study in Charlotte a strong four stars. The next book I read is Siege and Storm by Leigh Bardugo. As you guys know, if you watched my last wrap up, I was when I read Shadow and Bone, I stick by what I said about how this series really is just such a fun and entertaining ride. I really just enjoyed the heck out of this book just as I enjoyed Shadow and Bone. I know a lot of people say that this book it runs pretty slow and I disagree. I don't think it really was that slow. Did I enjoy it as much as Shadow and Bone? Definitely not. I think there's very few sequels that live up to the hype of the first book, but I just really, really loved this. I love a pirate trope and there are pirates in here. Of course, it's only through the half of the book and then the second half, you don't really get that anymore, uh, which I mean, was fine. I thought I was going to hate the second half because the first half was so good and I was waiting for to be disappointed basically, um, but I wasn't. This was really good. It was really fun. I have tons of tabs. I love Nikolai with my whole heart and soul. Nobody is surprised about that. I thought it was a really fun time. I gave it four out of five stars, just like I gave Shadow and Bone. I had a grand old time. I don't know what else to say. The next book I read this month is Sleeping Giants by Sylvan Nouvelle. That's a name right there. This is a sci-fi trilogy. We start off the story with a little girl and she is riding her bike in the woods and she falls down a hole and lands in the palm of a ginormous like robot hand. So think like Iron Giant. And from there we kind of fast forward and she ends up becoming a scientist and she is in she is interviewed by this mysterious anonymous figure who is like this really connected powerful guy and they are going on a search for the rest of this robot's parts so they can build it and you know, go from there. I listened to this with my dad actually, which was a really fun time. We listened to it all in one day uh, during our trip to Monterey. And this had a super strong start. I was enjoying the heck out of this. I really loved how it was told in these interview format. I thought it moved the story super fast and we only got the most important parts and I thought it was just a really really interesting and intriguing story, at least the first half. But the second half gets a lot more political and usually I don't mind politics, I actually quite like politics in my books, but I think maybe because it's modern, it's set in modern times and it's kind of doing modern international politics, it just wasn't as interesting to me. I think there was too much of a heavy hand in that. But I will say that that did make the story extremely realistic and if they didn't because as you're think, you would think like, okay, they are building this giant robot. How are people going to react? How are other countries going to react to this? And in that case, if you like that realism aspect, I think you would really enjoy this. But me personally, I don't care. Like I don't read a book for realism. And so for me, it dragged the story out. Like I, like I said, I didn't want to happen and I was just not intrigued anymore. Don't think I'm going to be continuing with the trilogy just because I'm not really interested anymore. But I don't regret reading this because I did think it was a very interesting concept and I was intrigued at least the first half. So I don't really have much complaints about it, but yeah, definitely not my personal cup of tea, but if this interests you, I would recommend picking it up because it wasn't bad necessarily, it just wasn't for me. The next book I read in the month of August, and I'm so happy I finally got to it, was Nevernight by Jay Kristoff. <laughs> I am so happy I finally read this baby of book two. It is such a long time coming. I have tried to read this. I have tried to love this so many 
times and I just don't think I was in a place to love this. And finally this month when I finally got my own copy and picked it up, I decided to annotate it. I dedicated the time needed to read this book and love it and I did. I loved it so so much. You guys know Never Night. We follow this girl Mia Corvere as she is trying to become an assassin of the Red Church in order to avenge her family's wrongdoings done by the government. We get to see her training at the Red Church and it was a really really interesting fun time. You get to see each aspect of the Red Church which I didn't know going in that there were these like separate sections per se and it was so much fun. I had such a good time. I definitely don't have the complaints that other people do where a lot of people say that it drags on in the beginning. During this run through I completely disagree. I was hooked from the start and I really enjoyed every single aspect of this book. This is of course a five stars and I said this in my vlog when I read this and if you want to go check that out link up there. This is a very objective five stars for me. I definitely don't have that pull, that drive, that um, emotional connection to this story quite yet and I mentioned that I believe God's Grave is when I'll officially be 100% converted to the Nevernight fandom but this because it's just written so well you can tell that Jay has planned out every single detail of this story going in to Nevernight and I am just really excited to see where the story goes. I really loved the writing style in this. I was very hesitant because J. Kristoff definitely does very metaphorical writing that is not everybody's cup of tea including my own but I honestly grew to really appreciate it because I think his writing style fits really well with the story and I really loved the footnotes. I love world building. It's my favorite thing about fantasy and so getting those like extra footnotes that don't necessarily have anything to do with the plot was really enjoyable for me. I had a really really fun time. I have God's Grave waiting to be picked up so hopefully I'll get that done in the month of September and yeah I also have Dark Dawn on the way which is gonna be great and I'm really really excited to see how where the story goes and where it takes me and I had a really fun time. The next book I read was Shiver by Maggie Steve Otter. I read this for the Trashback Book Club which will be having their live show today as I'm filming this so hopefully I can link that up above for you guys to go watch it if you're interested. Shiver follows our main characters Grace and Sam and Sam is a werewolf and Grace is a human so you can anticipate what happens here. They are basically in love from the start. They have this bond while he's a wolf and she's a human and then something occurs where Sam gets forced into his human form and there's just drama ensues and honestly I gave this a 2.5 out of 5 stars. I really just did not enjoy this. It was all kissing. It was just a lot a lot of kissing and let me just say that if I read this when I was younger I feel like I would absolutely love this. The plot just was so boring and just dragged and I feel like if, if the downfall of this is just because they are in love from the start like from the very first page they're basically in love with each other so you don't get the building of the romance you don't get the tension and I need that tension and build because if you guys are just in love from the start I'm not invested in the relationship so and because the book is all about the relationship I was very bored. The next book I read was Let's Call It a Doomsday by Katie Henry. This was one of my highly anticipated releases of the year and this is the author of Heretics Anonymous which is one of my favorite books of the year and let me just say that this book was a fantastic sophomore novel. I cannot praise Katie Henry enough. She is definitely my favorite contemporary author hands down. There is no competition. I love her 
so much. Katie Henry is so incredibly talented in describing teenagers and their stories. She gives them such validation. She gives them such strength and power. She gives them such a great coming of age story and this is just the pinnacle of that. I can clearly see how much she's already grown as an author compared to Heretics Anonymous. I absolutely loved this story. We follow our main character Ellis and Ellis suffers from extreme anxiety. She is a doomsday prepper. She kind of catastrophizes every scenario. She is constantly running through how the world is going to end, the, the worst case scenario, what would happen if she did X, Y, and Z. And we follow her as she meets this character, Hannah, who is this kind of clairvoyant character, and she tells Ellis that she knows how the world is going to end. And Ellis has to help Hannah find this person who is going to help them figure out the details of the whole scenario. This book definitely heavily follows Alyssa's anxiety. That is a huge theme of the book. We get a lot of her therapy sessions. We get a ton of her intrusive thoughts. They are all written on the page and it was just such an amazing depiction of anxiety. It, it dealt with such hard topics that teenagers and really everybody deals with, but especially through a teenager's eyes. I just know that this was such a hard thing to write and I know that this is going to help so many people and I just had such a good time. And not only does it deal with these heavy topics, but it has so much comic relief in it as well, which is just so typical of a Katie Henry book. It just didn't disappoint at all. Another topic that is dealed with is Ellis's discovery of her sexuality and how she deals with that in comparison to her religious beliefs because Ellis is Mormon and she discovers along the way that she might like girls as well as guys. So it was such a such a good, such a good book. I cannot rec recommend this highly enough. This is a 4.5 out of 5 stars for me. I The only reason it is not a 5 star is just because the plot didn't exactly connect to me as well as Heretics Anonymous did. I definitely enjoyed the plot of Heretics Anonymous more, but I enjoyed the messages and the themes of Let's Call It a Doomsday way more than Heretics Anonymous. I think she really went there with this book and I just, just so much applause for her. I adore her so much. If you can deal with the heavy depictions of anxiety and kind of that heavy theme of the entire book, I cannot recommend this highly enough. I thought it was so well done and I just need to stop talking about it because I really could spend all day talking about this book. The next two things I read is volume one and two of Sleepless and this is a graphic novel. This is a graphic novel duology. There's only two volumes of this and we are following Poppy and she is the illegitimate daughter of the king who has recently passed away and we are getting her journey as she is kind of discovering what her life at court is going to be now that her father is dead and her uncle is now on the throne. But we also follow her as she is trying to figure out who is trying to take her life because she is in this assassination plot and people trying to kill her. So she is trying to figure out who is behind these attempted murders and she, with the help of her sleepless night because in this world there are these band of warriors who take a sleepless vow to never sleep and they are these super powerful um band of soldiers and uh Serenic is her sleepless night and there is of course a romance between them which is the cutest romance Ever. I absolutely loved this graphic novel so much. The art style, absolutely gorgeous. I cannot tell you how happy I was to see a dark skin main character as the center of this fantasy world. It was just such a beautiful, beautiful story. I loved it so much. There is also a princess in here who has cystic acne and I think it was 
so amazing that that representation was in a period setting. It was so well done, so beautiful. I loved it so, so much. This is a four point, both of them, 4.5 out of five stars for me. The only reason it's not a five star is just because I wanted more. And that's not because I don't think this volume ended well or this story ended well. I actually think it ended perfectly the way it should be. I'm glad it didn't drag out it to the point where I would lose interest in the book. I just wish this was a full-length novel. I want this to be a book, like an actual book, because I feel like Poppy and Serenic would just dominate the booktube book community as the best couple of all time because they are just so adorable. I love them so much. So definitely if you are looking for a graphic novel with gorgeous art and a lovely romance and a great plot, I would definitely pick these up. Oh boy! So the next book I read was The Girl the Sea Gave Back by Adrian Young. <sighs> wow, this book was terrible. I gave this one out of five stars. I was given an arc of this by the publishers through NetGalley, so thank you for giving me early access, but wow, this was such a terrible, terrible book. I talked a lot about this in the vlog where I read this, so I'm definitely going to link it up here because I pretty much just yell at the camera, so that's entertaining. If you guys don't know, Adrian Young wrote A Sky in the Deep, which I heard people pretty much averagely liked. I think the overall consensus is it was like a three star. Um, I wish this was a three star. It really was. Like it was to the point where Adrian Young completely forgot to write a novel. There was no plot. The characters blurred together because this is told in dual perspective. Dual perspective first person, which I found I do not like because for this exact reason, because the characters did not have a mind of their own. They had no personalities. So I was just blending them in my head. I had to go back to look at the chapters to see which chapter I was even on. It was absolutely convoluted. There was so much info dumping in this book. There were so many characters and names and places that were just thrown at you and you never had the chance to fully flesh out and learn who anybody was or where anything was. So it was info dumping, but you didn't learn anything throughout the entire book. There was, the plot is basically just like warring clans. That's all I can say. And one of the main characters, she has runes tattooed on her skin because she was supposed to be sacrificed to the gods, but it didn't work out that way. Everything happened in like the last 20% of the book. And by everything, I mean nothing because I wasn't invested throughout the whole thing. I cannot not recommend this enough. Like it was trash, it was garbage, it was horrible, it was so boring. I hated every minute of it. This is hands down one of the worst reads I've read this year. Please do not be tempted by the cover because the cover is stunning and you would hope that the inside is at least kind of good, but it's really not and that's all I have to say about it because I want to forget that I ever read it until the end of the year when I do my worst books of the year wrap up. The next book I read was Ruin and Rising by Levar Dugo. That's right, I finished the Grisha trilogy. I cannot tell you the last time I binge read a series. I haven't even read that many sequels this year. So the fact that I finished an entire trilogy, I am so proud of myself. I gave this bad boy 2.5 out of 5 stars, but really that's a petty rating for me. It's honestly probably a 3.5, even a 4 star, just like the rest of them. I just hated the ending. And if you want to see my full fleshed out spoiler thoughts, I will just go watch that same vlog and I go through all of my in-depth thoughts. I'm glad that Alina is happy, regardless of her terrible taste in men. I am glad that I finished this trilogy. I thought it was a really fun time. I really loved the Grisha trilogy and if you haven't started the Grisha world, the Grishaverse, I would say don't skip this trilogy because it was a really fun and entertaining read. And the other book I read in the month of August was Six of Crows by Lee Dugo. Oh my god. I am so proud of myself and happy that I have finally read Six of Crows. This is such a long time coming. It, it really, I really can't even still talk about this book properly because 
I knew I was gonna love Six of Crows, listen. I knew it. I knew it was a band of smart ass assholes. I already knew I loved the way Lee Bardugo does banter. So I knew this was going to be so good. People were saying how her writing just improves so much. Also, her writing style in Room Rising was so, so, so good. There were so many lines in here, but of course it only amplified tenfold with Six of Crows. I loved the intricacy of Kaz Brecker's strategic mind. I got to finally meet my baby, my wife, my goddess, Nina Zenik. I love her with all of my heart and soul. Definitely, probably my favorite character of all time now. I know that's kind of bold of me to say, but I just adore her with my whole entire heart. And uh, by the way, we just found out that she has confirmed a Leo, so... You guys can't say a single thing about Leos anymore because Nina Zinnick is one of us. I dare you to say something negative about Leos. But anyways, back on track, I loved this so much. I just... I really can't say a single negative thing about this. The only thing I really have to say about this is this brought emotions and love that I never thought I was going to have again with the book. I said this in the vlog, but it made me feel like a teenager again reading a series and falling in love with it. Uh, and I, I just, I really never thought I was going to have those emotions again because I thought I kind of grew past that but it, it, it definitely gave me those feels that like say the infertile devices did when I first read them as a teenager and I am so thankful for it and I'm so thankful for Lee Bardugo for doing that and invoking those emotions in me and uh, I'm officially a Six of Crows stan but nobody's surprised about that. All right guys we are getting closer to the end. The next book I read is the worst book I have ever read in my entire life. It is the worst book of the year and I'm so mad at myself for reading the entire thing but we do what we have to for content and that is The Secret History by Donna Tartt. I buddy read this with Monty from It's Monty Price and we had the exact same thoughts. I will link down his wrap up below. I'm not going to say too much about this because I am going to film a rant review after this. So definitely look out for that if you want to know more of my in-depth thoughts. But basically we both have zero idea why this is so loved everywhere because I am in the, we are in the minority here. Like, if you look on Goodreads, everybody rates this 5 out of 5 stars. Like, everybody. We don't think we read the same book, basically. I certainly don't think I read the same book. It was just pointless, uninspiring, worthless garbage. You guys don't know what The Secret History is about. It follows our main character, Richard, and he is this poor kid from California, and he gets the opportunity to go to a college in the East Coast in Vermont, and at this school there is this kind of band of kids who take Greek, and they are just this pretentious rich kids and they kind of drag Richard in, well not even drag Richard in, he kind of just forces himself in their group, but uh, the group murders someone in the group, so it's kind of like a how to get away with murder type thing, but not nearly as exciting and not nearly as interesting and not nearly as fun. It's just pretentious homophobic racist trash. The writing isn't even good, so I... I'm not going to get into it because I have to film the right review, but I really, I don't understand. That's it. I just don't understand. The next book I read, or the next group of books I read is what I read for the 24 Hours Smithathon. So I will link that video up above as well because I'm not going to talk too much about these books because I talked about them in this video, but the first book I read was The Flat Share by Beth O'Leary. This isn't really a smutty book, this is more just a contemporary romance, like the smut was pretty much fade to black, but I was already reading it during the process of the 24 Hours Month on, so I just knocked it out. Whatever, you guys don't care. The Flat Share follows our two main characters, Tiffy and Leon, and they go into this agreement to share the flat, but Leon works night shifts at the hospital and Tiffy works a general nine to five job. So like they share like the bed, you know, one bed fanfics, but they never meet each other or they never see each other. They just kind of talk via notes throughout the apartment and they 
grow to eventually start texting and calling and meeting each other but that's kind of how their relationship builds and if you guys know I, I read emergency contact and that kind of has similar not really similar vibes but they talk during text message these people talk with notes and stuff it's really cute i don't really have anything else to say i definitely recommend this i do recommend the audiobook though because leon's perspective is written extremely weirdly definitely recommend the audiobook because at least for me i didn't notice it while listening but i couldn't read it physically does chelsea ever let me down i don't think so the next book i read was the warlord wants forever by cressley cole this is a valkyrie vampire romance wasn't my thing gave it a 2.5 out of 5 stars i think i'm going to continue with this series at least try the first book the next round of smothathon but this one was not my cup of tea the next thing i read uh, was the sunstone graphic novel this i gave a four out of five stars really loved this it is a female female romance and they are in a bdsm relationship it is way more wholesome than i thought it was gonna be uh and it wasn't actually that smutty like their the art is very graphic let me just say it's very graphic but there's not like the smut scenes are actually like kind of fade to black so i was not expecting that uh but it was really good it was really cute and wholesome and it really made me want to read more female female romances for sure especially smut because i can only handle discussions of big dicks so much speaking of the last thing i read was desperate measures by katie robert this is a jafar and jasmine smut this whole series is going to be a villains series the next book is going to be hades and meg which we get to meet in this book and we also meet hook and tink so we get to see a wide range of disney characters in it and this was definitely a very very spunny rhyme i gave it a three 3.5 out of 5 stars, I believe. So I'm definitely going to continue with this series the next year on this month. All right, you guys, so that is the end of this video. I finally, geez, that took forever. Let me know down below if you guys have read any of the books I've read or what your favorite or least favorite book of the month was. But that's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye!